Today, it's going to be a slightly different type of video. I'm not going to talk about particular ETFs, but above all, it's going to be different because at some point in this video, I'm not going to tell you when, hidden within the content, I'm going to say something, and one of you that will catch what I say and do it will win $150. So you might want to listen to the whole video without skipping anything. This is cruel marketing. <laughs> yes, it might be, but who doesn't like free money? So. Without further ado, in today's video I'll tell you how I made $250,000 in around 3 years by investing, having only a regular job. Let's start. What's up everyone, my name is Rick, your retailing investor, twin of Manu Ginobili, and eternal low-result YouTuber. So, if you want to help me change this, subscribe to the channel and join our community of investing enthusiasts. Today I want to talk to you about how I managed to get a portfolio of around $250,000 in more or less 3 years while having only a regular and honestly not extremely well paid job. I'm doing this not to brag or to tell you how good I am at investing because I actually have an endless number of mistakes behind me, but instead because I often hear of people that believe they are too late or that the stock market is a too slow wealth builder, and well, this is not true. It's never too late, and even with a regular job and investing safely in the stock market, you can make a lot of money in a relatively short period of time. And today, I want to show you how. There have been a couple of different things that I did that helped me tremendously on my path so far. Some of them have to do with mistakes that I stopped making, some of them with how I dealt with money in the last years, and some of them with how I dealt with investments. And in today's video, I'm going to go through all of them, starting with the mistakes, up to my money management and to my investments. To give you some background, in my normal day-to-day -day life, I work as an engineer. And until very recently, I didn't really have a great salary. I would say that in the last three years, I brought home maybe an average of $45,000 after tax. So not the great numbers that some positions in some cities in the US get you. Anyway, three years ago, I didn't really have much invested because before that, I had almost all of my money in crypto and I lost most of it. And also three years ago, I bought an apartment, so I kind of had to start from scratch with investments. Now, the first thing that I did that really helped me a lot to get where I am today was to stop gambling on crypto and risky stocks or cigar butt stocks, like Warren Buffett calls them. I think it was three years ago when the crypto market started crashing. And before that, almost 90% of my money was in crypto and 10% was in single stocks. So imagine how happy I was when basically all I had saved in years dissolved into thin air. And I remember that I saw a lot of the crypto I had left, obviously an extreme loss, and I used it as an initial capital to buy the apartment where I live now. Now you can say that now crypto is back up, pretty much, and if I instead kept all the crypto I had, now I would have a higher net worth. And yes, it might be true, but what I decided to do back then is what I believe set me up to be a successful long-term investor, and that is, First, I decided to keep not more than 5% of my total portfolio in crypto. And second, I only held the most important cryptos instead of gambling on risky cryptos. Now, to make things worse, the little money I didn't have in crypto was mostly in what Warren Buffett calls cigar butt investing. Basically, looking for companies that are like a used cigar on the floor that has one last puff to take. So back then, I was a freak of stock picking, and I used to create tables after tables to find all the companies that had performed the worst in the last years, losing most of their value, and then I would try to find out which one of these companies actually had good financials despite their price falling down. And as much as this might look like a good strategy, because it's actually what a value investor does, I was kind of taking it to the extremes because I was buying companies that had lost like 50-60% of their value in the last years, and my presumption was that since the financials of these companies weren't as bad as their price drop, I was actually getting a bargain. Well, I couldn't be more wrong. After I bought them, the companies kept going down and eventually I sold them in a loss. And the reason why they never recovered was that first, they weren't so undervalued as I thought. But instead, they were actually overvalued before dropping. And second, as an ignorant retail investor as I was, I was actually just looking at the public financials, but I didn't really know the ins and outs. All right, the thing that I'm going to tell you now is probably the biggest reason why I was able to raise around $250,000 of portfolio within three years with a regular job. Well, the next reasons I'm going to tell you after this have to do directly with how I invested the money, 
This one doesn't and still, I believe it's been one of the most important success factors. Now, when you follow investing channels that usually tell you to save 15% of your salary and invest it, well, I believe this is total BS. Salary may vary between 20,000 a year to 200,000 a year and their expenses also. It doesn't make any sense. What I do believe instead is that as long as you're young and you don't have kids, you should go all in with everything you possibly can. And there's a really good reason for this. You've probably seen a lot of videos about the fact that the net worth grows slowly until 100,000 and then skyrockets. This is because of the compound interest. So the more you have, the more the growth is going to be impactful. But in my opinion, there is another, even more important reason why you should find all the possible human ways to save more every month. And that is that it's the best way to have a return, which is two, three, or 10 times better than all the other people. Let me explain. Let's say that Bob and Kevin earn a hundred grand a year. Bob heard you should invest at least 15% of your salary. So the first year he invests 15,000 bucks. Kevin instead lives a frugal life and doesn't like to spend $7 on a coffee if he can make one home for like 50 cents. So instead he invests more. Both of them invest in a similar way. They buy the whole stock market, maybe they try some tech ETFs and play a little bit with stock picking. And this makes them achieve around 10% per year. Bob asks himself, then how can I make more than 10% per year? Maybe if I'm a good stock picker, I can manage to do 15%. Maybe if I invest all in tech ETFs, I can even make 20 or 25%. Well, the mistake that Bob makes and most investors make is that he focuses on how to raise his portfolio performance. Ladies and gentlemen, forget about it. You might be lucky and do 20% for one year, but in the long run, you're gonna be pretty close to that 10% of the stock market, if not less. So mark my words, the performance of your portfolio is not what's gonna make you rich. It's gonna be on average seven, 10% and you don't have so much control over it. But now let's get to Kevin. Kevin knew that one way or another, his performance would have been around 10% per year. So what he does is, he focuses instead on something on which he has total control of his expenses. Without pushing it too far, he manages to invest 30% of his salary instead of 15%. And before telling me it's impossible, I'm pretty sure that if I do a financial audit on any of you, I know how I can make you double your savings because there is always a way. So Kevin saves and invests $30,000 in the first year. And this is the magic that happens. Bob needs to have a 100% return on his investment in the first year if he wants to even get close to Kevin's portfolio, 100%. Kevin could even have a 0% return and still, to get to Kevin's results, Bob would have to be the best and luckiest stock picker in history. So my suggestion to you is focus on what you can control. If you wanna have a better result than your neighbor that has the same salary as you, instead of trying to do magic with stock picking, Focus on reducing your expenses because just a little bit more savings are gonna grow your portfolio more than what you would have achieved making 15% return instead of 10%. Now, besides saving like crazy and avoiding all stupid buys that most people allow themselves because you live only once, there are some things that I did that are directly related to how I invested. First of all, I learned to risk more while risking less. Before, I used to take stupid, uncalculated risks. In the last three years, I learned what it means to take calculated risks. And this helped me achieve a much higher return than the stock market without actually risking too much. Now, taking calculated risks for me means making an investment whose risk-adjusted potential return is higher than the one of the total stock market. In 2022, for example, the crisis brought down both the total stock market and the technology sector, which as you know, is the most powerful sector ever and you need to invest in it. So in 2022, in the middle of the crisis, I asked myself, what is the probability that the total stock market is gonna recover next year? and estimated the percentage to be around 50%, like a coin toss. And what is the return I'm gonna expect from the total stock market if this happens? I assume it would be something around 20%. So a 50% probability to grow 20%. And then I ask myself, all the tech companies that are falling now, like Apple, Microsoft, Google, what is the probability that they are gonna recover next year? They are solid companies, right? 
So the probability of recovery must be around 50%, like the total stock market itself. Because if the total stock market recovers, also the tech companies eventually are gonna recover. But the potential growth of these companies is probably much higher than the 20% of the stock market, probably around 50%. So a 50% probability to grow 50%. For me, it was a no-brainer. 50% probability to grow 50% is better than 50% probability to grow 20%. That's why during the crisis of 2022, I invested strongly in single tech stocks, although I tendentially invest more in the ETFs for the long term. Now, another thing that I did a lot in 2021, and my friends can witness this because I was always telling them this, is I invested less every month and built up cash reserves the longer the market was going well. I never stopped investing, but my approach is that the longer the market goes well, the higher the probability that a crash or a correction is coming. And please, don't get me wrong, I don't mean to time the market, and I always invest in bad and in good times. But as Warren Buffett says, it's wise for investors to be fearful when others are greedy and to be greedy only when others are fearful. So in the last few years, I learned to reduce the investments a little bit when people were too optimistic and instead go heavier on investments during crisis, regardless of if I thought that the crisis was going to be over soon or not. This helped me a lot actually, because when the crisis in 2022 started, I had a decent cash reserve and I started investing heavier and heavier as the market was going down. And the more it went down, the more I increased the monthly investment. Another thing that I did, and certainly helped me a lot to get to the $250,000 portfolio in just three years, was that I overweighted my portfolio in information technology. I know that this is a risky move, and as I always say on my channel, please, people, be careful with information technology because the growth we've had in the past 12 months looks a lot like a bubble to me. Earnings are here, I know, nothing wrong with that, but we have the highest PE ratio of the last decade. So the prices must come down at some point. And before moving to the last point, I wanna tell you now how you can win $150 that I'm personally gonna to send to your account, as I said at the beginning of the video. What you have to do is pretty simple. You just have to comment on the next video that I'm gonna publish next Friday, on the 19th of July, with an original comment of your choice that must include the secret words, first prize. So in the seven days following that, so between the 19th of July and the 26th of July, I'm gonna monitor the comments and the comment that includes the secret words first prize and gets the highest number of replies is going to belong to the person that will personally receive from me $150 to do with as it pleases. Obviously, to be able to get notified of the videos and check if you won, I suggest you subscribe to the channel and to get the highest number of replies, the best way is of course to share the video in your social networks. I'm testing this giveaway, to be honest, to try to increase awareness of my channel. So if I see that it helps, I'm gonna do more giveaways in the future videos. So subscribe to the channel and don't miss the next videos because hidden within the content, I will do money giveaways from time to time. And now that I have a small following, the probability of winning is probably pretty high. Now, the last thing I believe that helped me a lot to grow my portfolio so much in three years was that I played it safe in times of good economy and risky in bad times. Generally speaking, I'm an ETF investor. And in particular, I like to play it safe with the S&P 500. But every time there's a crash or a big correction, and luckily there is normally one every couple of years, that's where I become a monster and really go strongly on riskier stuff. I don't really risk actually. It's not like I buy GameStop or other BS stocks, but what I do is I invest mainly in a sector ETF of the sector that dropped the most, which is usually information technology. And I invest strongly in the biggest companies in the world, like Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Meta, and so on. This allows me to get the most out of my portfolio in times of crisis because the companies I buy and the sectors I buy have a stronger drawdown than the stock market itself. So they're also going to rebound stronger than the market. In good times, instead, I mostly just buy the S&P 500. All right, this was basically it. This is how I turned my portfolio to around $250,000 that I have today. I could have had more, but this year I've had a lot of big unexpected expenses, so I had to slow down a little. And next week, don't forget next week, I'm gonna publish a video where I reveal my whole investing portfolio. So in order to win the $150 like I explained before, and in order to see the next video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop a beautiful like to this video. I wish you a great day, guys. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.